we need a gas exchange system because our surface area to volume ratio is actually quite small. We've got a small surface area compared to our volume. And so to get to all those respiring cells in our body, we need a system. At the same time, we need to be able to conserve water. And that's why our gas exchange system, rather than it being outside our body, is all shoveled up and down inside so that we've only got a small area for which we can exchange the gases and a small area where we can therefore conserve water. We know we lose water when we breathe because if you've ever gone to a cold pane of glass or a mirror and breathed on it, you'll see the condensation. So the lungs are highly specialised surfaces because they are the exchange area between the air and the blood. And because our lungs are so specialised and they're made of such thin cells, it's like a cell that's been spherical and then completely squashed. We call it squamous epithelium. They would be easily damaged outside the body. So by keeping them inside the body, we're able to protect them. The lungs are there to also get rid of our carbon dioxide, our waste. It's an excretory product. And the reason why we need to get rid of that is, of course, because carbon dioxide is an acidic gas. If it builds up in our system, the pH will drop, become more acidic, and of course our enzymes will denature. Well, respiration itself is driven by enzymes, as are most reactions in the body. So let's have a look at the various structures that comprise our gaseous exchange system. So let's start off where for air first enters. We've got our mouth and our nose, and if we just draw them simply, on a diagram, there's the nose, there's the mouth, and they both come to the same point at the back of your throat. And the first part of the system is the trachea. So the trachea is your main windpipe, and it's supported by incomplete rings of cartilage. What I mean by that is they are like a C shape, and they help to keep the trachea open. So there's nothing that can force it to collapse. It's just kept open all of the time. They're incomplete rings because behind it sits the esophagus. And when you swallow food, you don't want it to go bumping past all those rings of cartilage, bump, 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 bump. And cartilage is like soft bone. It's a little bit more flexible than bone. Um, and so, it, but it's strong enough to do the job. The trachea then branches into two bronchi. And when you watch my dissection in one of my other uploads, you'll see that even in the bronchi, they are still held open by rings of cartilage. This time, complete rings. Each bronchus then splits into smaller and smaller tubes called bronchioles. These get smaller and smaller and smaller, and ultimately they end in structures called alveoli. Okay, now thinking back to your year eight days where you learned about respiration and breathing, if we just think about this trachea, the epithelial lining of the trachea, you'll remember it's made of two types of cell. It's made of ciliated epithelial cells and it's made of goblet cells. They're interspersed through the wall and the goblet cells make mucus. So clearly we'd expect them to have a lot of mitochondria, a lot of endoplasmic reticulum, a lot of Golgi apparatus. And then the ciliated epithelial cells literally have hair-like extensions. They're not hairs, hair-like extensions that help to waft the mucus up. And of course, that's when you're either gonna swallow it, gross, it goes down to your stomach or you uh, are going to blow it out of your nose or spit it out or whatever. So let's remember that um, these bronchioles, these tiny tubes, collectively they've got a huge surface area, so they're now creating quite a bit of drag compared to this tube here. So quite a lot of force is needed to pull air in and push air out, in other words, ventilation. And also uh, now the surface area is huge in terms of water loss, if this was outside your body, you'd be losing far too much water. 
but because they're inside, the diffusion gradient is lessened. The alveoli are, of course, our gas exchange surface, so they need to be extremely thin to create a short diffusion pathway. They also need to be elastic to maintain that surface area and to be able to expand and then force air out. And the collagen that surrounds them is there for support. They are, of course, both totally permeable to oxygen and carbon dioxide. So the lungs obey the five basic characteristics of any specialised exchange surface. Number one, they have a large surface area, relative, of course, to the organism. Number two, they are thin. The alveoli are what's called squamous epithelium. They're like the pavement stones of a pathway. They're around and they've been squashed to reduce that diffusion distance. The third thing is that they are selectively permeable. We don't want everything moving across there, but of course, they're extremely permeable, in this case, to oxygen and carbon dioxide. The fourth thing that exchange surfaces need is some method to move the medium of substances that you're trying to absorb. So, for example, in this case, we have a way of moving air in and out. We're not relying just on diffusion to get the air in, we use ventilation and that's what we talk about in next lesson. All the pressure changes that pull air in and then push air out. So we've got a movement of the medium that we're trying to extract things from. And then the fifth thing is a transport medium. Remembering that over these epithelium of the alveoli we have a lot of blood capillaries. It has a rich blood supply and the reason why that's so important is because yes we want the oxygen to move in but then we want it to clear off and go away because while the oxygen's just sitting there we've reduced the diffusion gradient by moving it off and replacing it with deoxygenated blood that diffusion gradient is uh, maximized let's say and then you will breathe the air out. And to be able to compare the relative efficiency of different gas exchange systems, some of those factors can be measured by putting them into this formula and working it out. We're saying that diffusion is equal to the surface area times the difference in concentration divided by the length of the diffusion path. Now, you would never be expected to remember that. It's called fixed law. However, you might be given it in an exam and asked to work with it with some given data. So before we move on, do you know this topic? Are you able to compare the difference in structure between the trachea and the bronchioles? Are you able to relate structure to function? Are you able to uh, explain how the alveoli are protected by the other tubes? Can you list the correct sequence of structures that the air passes through when you breathe in, for example? So now make sure you go and watch my lung dissection video where you'll see all these structures in real life.